when did Crocs become cool? I remember a couple years ago when people made fun of people who wore Crocs. I don't know where I was when Crocs became cool. Let me know. When did when did that happen? Because I don't remember when that happened. Good morning. It is Tuesday, November 15th. And hello. My name is Dawn. I am a teen librarian in a public library in Illinois. And I vlog from work so that you can see what it is like to be a public librarian. It's probably not what you think. I did not get on here yesterday because I got here late and I left early. Y'all don't care about that. I will insert some footage of a program we had where teens learned how to do watercolors. And I think they did a great job for people who've never done watercolors before. Fantastic job. And I had a great teacher, which was our marketing coordinator at the library. So this week's book du jour is, I don't have the book, it is The Cloisters by, what's her name? Katie something? Katie something. I'll put it on the screen. I'm always prepared. I just looked at the book and I didn't bother to look at the author's name. Whatever. Katie something. And it is about a young woman who is, you know, she's kind of dorky, kind of a loner. And she gets a one in a life op one in a life I don't think that's right once in a lifetime that's what it is <laughs> opportunity to intern at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York she's from which um Washington I almost said Wisconsin no I live close to Wisconsin but no she's from Washington and she has an opportunity to intern at the Met in New York and she's like hells yeah and when she gets there the HR person is like oh sorry you're boss is off on a trip somewhere so you can't intern here which is really shitty to have her come all that way knowing her boss was not going to be there like they, they could have told her that a week ago before she packed up her shit that was really shitty and she is like oh no what am I gonna do come to find out there's an opening at the cloister museum I think that's the name of it and it is a gothic medieval art museum it also has plants and they specialize in the history of divination, which sounds like a good time to me. I'm really not into like astrology and um, that type of stuff. Like I know I'm a Libra and I kind of know what that means, but I'm not really into it like a lot of people, but I think it's interesting. I think it's fascinating. So that is the book of the week this week. Looking at my calendar here. It's my calendar. I've kind of showed it before. Looking at my calendar for the week. Um, I had a program yesterday and I have a program Thursday which adults will be making some tumblers using the Cricut. You know those those mugs, those cups, those water bottles. Eventually I'll get the right words. Whether you have your name on it, it's all sparkly. That that bullshit and they're sewing on Saturday which I probably won't show you because it's technically not my program but I'm helping a co-worker and that's my programming for the week I have a meeting in about 15 minutes with the architects I'm getting a new teen space it will be in the adult department so smack in the middle of the adult department because I'm sure they're gonna love that the teens so we have architects coming in to show me like carpet samples and furniture samples and all that stuff and as far as the rest of my week I have to contact people I finished judging the short story contest hallelujah perhaps I will read the winner and the runner-up they're all everybody who won did poetry because everyone who entered a story entered a chapter two. Like nobody entered a story. It's called a short story contest, not a chapter two contest. None of those people won. It's a shame because they were some really good writers. Like those stories were far more creative than some of the stuff I've been reading lately. Like grammar was great. It characters, I was but it wasn't a story. So I had to mark them down accordingly because it was not a complete story. So I think poetry won in every division. But. 
So I have to contact those people and tell them that they won, which is always exciting. And, oh God, I am a dumbass. So I accidentally volunteered myself. Every year we have a holiday party for the public. And it's from like one to three on a Saturday. We decorate the whole library. Like nobody's like working as far as like reference desk. I mean, we are, but really it's a party. And we get a couple hundred people. And I usually have an activity in my makerspace. Here's my makerspace. I usually have a couple people. I usually run an activity in makerspace, but I'm not about to be with all them people like that. So I said, hey, you can do Santa pictures in the makerspace. And they were like, cool, can you decorate the makerspace to look like the North Pole? If you are a frequenter of the vlog, you will know that I cannot decorate for shit. My book displays look like shit. I hate decorating. So now I have to try and figure out how to turn the makerspace into the North Pole. I'm really enjoying this lipstick, by the way. You guys like it? Don't look at my eyelash. I always have problems with my eyelash. I'm gonna get some falsies, like, like legit falsies because this lipstick is lovely. It's Revlon. Where is it? Where did I put it? Is it Revlon or is it CoverGirl? Yeah, it's Revlon. Color stay. I saw Megan the Stallion promoted. I was like, hells yeah. All right. Um, I think the architects are here. So I will be going, I don't know if I'll be able to take you, take me with, I don't know if I'll be able to take you with me. We'll see if I can sneak you into the meeting. Uh, but yeah, I will catch you later in the next update and whatever else I got to do. I got to make some, um, some, yeah, I'll talk about it later. See you later. Bye. One thing, first of all, I, I don't know what the plot of this book is. I'm at about 25%. There's no plot. Plot? Plot? Love that. But what I do like is how they are using divination as a science and um, like an actual science and not a pseudoscience but um, astrology and how um, it connects with fate and just all the stuff that this place is studying, it's different. I've never read that before in a book. So I am enjoying that aspect of it. So far, that's about it. So I'm about to start my, um, let me get my shoes. So I bought some Crocs for the first time. I thought I would never ever in my life get Crocs. And I didn't really get them for, because I wanted them. I got them because I want to see if I can make my own gibbets, giblies, whatever they're called. Uh, so I'm going to make them out of shrinky dink, shrink plastic. So we will see. And if I can do it, then we can make it into a craft for the teens. But... I'm jamming through this book and I'm probably about 30% in or whatever I don't know I'm listening to it I don't have the actual book I'm listening to it on script yay script and 
So, oh, home girl Annie and whatever the hell her name is, she is a dud. She's a horrible character. She's she's boring as hell. She's supposed to be mousy, and you know, there's another character that's really like wealthy and's got beautiful pale blonde hair, and she's tall and she's thin and she's fabulous. So she's like the opposite of Anne, Rachel, and. Anyway, back to Anne. Anne, okay, so they're at the Cloisters, which is a museum, and there's a gardener. I don't know his name. Leo, I don't know. It's not like I'm listening to this book right now or anything, but anyway, Leo. And every time Leo touches her or even brushes by her, she's like, oh my God, Leo touched my wrist with his fingertips. My whole body tingled. Leo's hot breath on my neck as he whispered, I'll help you. Made my body shiver. You're horny, we get it. <sighs> Rachel is supposed to be this fabuloso, but it's a lot of tell and not a lot of show. I, as the reader, should be like, ooh, Rachel's fabulous. I wish I was Rachel. But instead I'm like, neither girl is very interesting. Basically what I'm saying is that this book is boring as hell. It's boring, it's boring. Like, it's very character driven. Like, it's on Goodreads, it's categorized as a thriller. No, no. Um, my Shrinky Dinks are more thrilling than this book. It is not thrilling at all. So that's a problem, it's not a thriller. It's, it's character driven book, it's not plot anyway. It's not plot, it's very slow. And when you have a slower book, what should be happening is the world and the characters should be interesting enough to keep the reader engaged. That's not happening. I'm bored. These characters are not nuanced. I've read these characters before, so there's nothing new there. While the story is different, the author's not doing much with it. So I'm on two speed. I'm about to put it up to 2.5 because I'm bored. All right, without giving too much away, I call shenanigans. I call shenanigans on a character. And I think that this character is up to no good. And I don't know if it's because I just watch a lot of TV and read a lot of books, but this book is a little formulaic, if I'm being honest. And I would love to make a prediction, but then that would be spoilers. And so I'll make a prediction in my head. Maybe I'll write it down and then I'll like put a time on it and then at the end, I'll hold it up and then I'll blur it out if you don't want to see it. I think I'll do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to make a prediction right now. Hold on. I don't have the book, but I'm going to put the book cover on the screen. And so whilst the book cover is on the screen, I will be doing a, a prediction, which could possibly be a spoiler. So if you do not want to hear it, fast forward it until the book cover is no longer on the screen. Okay. So I think Rachel is the baddie. Uh, she said that her mother got her fortune told. And I think her fortune was somebody close to you is going to murder you. But she probably didn't know it was her daughter. She murdered her parents for probably money because that's what most people kill for is money. And she probably didn't know that she wasn't going to be able to get the money until she was like 30 years old. I don't know why she needed the money. Maybe she needed to buy something. I don't know. But she needed money. I'm going to guess that has something to do with her own fortune. She said that she doesn't like getting her fortune told and she did not want Patrick to do her fortune for her. But I think she already knew her fortune and she didn't want Patrick to do it because then he would have found something out that she did not want out. So she's like, I don't like my fortune being told. She's already had her fortune being told. And I think it has something to do with the missing tarot deck and um 
needing money. She killed her parents for it. That's my prediction. I'm kind of hoping I'm right because obviously, but then I'm hoping I'm not right because then that makes this book predictable and then I'm gonna have to rate it low. And none of this that I have said has is not based on any evidence that has been presented to me. It's a guess because this book is formulaic and that's a problem. Now, if there were clues that led me to said prediction, then I'd be like, who this book is great. It gave great clues, but it hasn't. This is just a hunch because this book is boring. Back to it, okay. Cover down, cover down. You can come back now. That's my prediction. So here's what I want you to do. Read the book, then come back and watch what I said to see if I was right, because then we'll be spoiled. All right, I'm hungry. I'm gonna eat my lunch, and then I'm gonna continue with my shrinky dinks. It's also really odd that a girl like Rachel, she's a society girl, she's very wealthy. Uh, her family has a house that has a name. Anytime your family ha owns a home and you have a name for your home, you are fancy. Fancy and wealthy. I find it odd that she has no friends. No girlfriends. No guy friends. She's like 25. And she has a helicopter and a house with a name. And an inheritance. I call shenanigans. Shenanigans. too big. That one looks big. I like this one. Oh my god. They're a little big. This one's a good size. This one's good. This one's too big. This one's really big. This one's my favorite. I'm gonna see if I can montage it or something. Uh, but this looks a little rough. Looks a little rough. But I don't have the gibbets, the jibblies, the jumblies, whatever they're called. Uh, I'll have them tomorrow, and I'll finish my shoes tomorrow. Cute. Yes, I know she's a turf. liking about the character development of this book is that our main character Anne is plain as hell like the girl is unremarkable in the most remarkable way however um she is incredibly selfish like very self-serving and I find that to be interesting because usually an, a mousy you know invisible girl is quite altruistic and you know, honest and good natured and good hearted, not this girl. I mean, she's not like cutthroat selfish, but somebody has been murdered. And she, instead of worrying about 
this person's family or just like the legacy and how how it affects like the museum as a whole all she cares about is how it affects her job and her situation something else has come up something quite dire and all she cares about is how it affects her she doesn't care about anybody else or anything else and i find that kind of refreshing because like i said usually a character like this would be selfless not selfish it makes her flawed that's about the only good thing i'm getting from this book i'm still bored i have it on 2.5 speed <laughs> So I finished the cloisters. I'm gonna give it a two and a half. Oof, 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 oof. It was a three into the last chapter, and then I was like, nope, don't like that ending. Overall, it was kind of predictable because I kind of predicted the ending. It was unremarkable at best. Like the cool part about the book was underdeveloped. The cool part about the book was the history of divination. But they didn't really do anything interesting with that. That's the cool thing about the book. Everything else has been found in other books. But the divination part and how tarot has been utilized by people throughout history as an actual science as opposed to a pseudoscience is really interesting it's really cool but katie hayes didn't really do anything with that she focused more on this rachel character who was not a good character i think she was trying to make her like this enigmatic woman but she was just every other woman that I've ever read before there was nothing special or unique about Rachel nothing and I also felt like something major wasn't answered I'm not gonna say what that is but I feel like at the end of the book there was a major thing that happened and it wasn't answered so that's that contributed to my rating dropped storylines or maybe i just missed it i did have it on two 2.5 speed because i was over it i was over it maybe i missed it i don't think that i did but perhaps it wasn't thrilling it's categorized as a thriller i was never thrilled or excited i was if anything underwhelmed incredibly underwhelmed so i do not recommend this book uh if you are into divinity don't read this book because you're going to be unsatisfied if you like thrillers or mysteries don't read this book because you're not going to be satisfied if you like books about gothic museums don't read this book because you're not going to be satisfied there's nothing satisfying about this book nothing i do not recommend it all right now that that's out of the way for our short story contest uh, we open it up to poetry and there is a grand prize category and the grand prize category is can be won by a high school or a middle schooler and we have a high school junior who won I'm not gonna say their name oddly enough and this is their poem it's really long so bear with me you can skip it if you don't want to hear it but 
Okay, so this is, I'm assuming this is spoken word. I am not a spoken word poet, don't judge me. Say his name, say his name, say his name. Whose name? His name. Whose name? His name. Whose name? His name. His name, his name. Let that sink in for a moment. His name, Trayvon Martin, George Floyd, Tamir Rice, Eric Gardner, Elijah McClain, Amir Locke. Everyone knows his name. But what about her name? What about her story? You know what this looks like? Patriarchy. Not only do black women deal with racism, they also deal with patriarchy, both within the black community and society in places like the workplace, the home, the hospital, the school, everywhere. She feels invisible. She feels insignificant. She feels hideous. She feels unappreciated. She feels unheard. She feels unsafe, unprotected. She feels sexualized. She feels objectified. She feels masculated. The black community can be a toxic place for her. Her dad neglected her and made her feel small. Her crush rejected her because she wasn't as pretty as the blue-eyed blonde. Her uncle touched her forbidden parts playfully and persuaded her to keep it a secret. Her husband shows his love through his heavy hands instead of heart. He's Atlas holding the world on her shoulders. She's Atlas holding the world on her shoulders, trying her best to be strong, black woman. American society is no better. Her coworkers fear her because she's too aggressive. Her boss doesn't pay her as well as her white coworkers. The Walmart employees watch her closely as she walks through the aisles. People think she's the queen of welfare when she's trying to take care of her kids. Society is oblivious of the black woman. They can't see, hear, feel, touch, or smell all the wonderful things she can do. They can't see her significance to American society. The black woman has been through many phases in this country. She was a slave working under the hot fury sun in the South. She was a victim of rape forced to please the man she calls master. She was a breeder birthing black babies for the brutal chattel slavery. She was the lab rat forced to endure painful surgical procedures for the father of gynecology. She was a conductor for the Underground Railroad who freed 70 slaves. She was a spy for the Civil War, a free woman disguised as a slave, sharing information to the Union from the White House of the Confederacy. Harriet Tubman. She was a victim of lynching who dared to avenge her husband's lynchings. She was an activist fighting for women's suffrage in the streets. She was a caricature wearing her white kitchen apron, smiling big, holding up pancake mix for the camera. She was the first black actress to win an Oscar acting in America's most racist movie. She was creating planes in the factories, nursing the men on the battlefield and running home. Runs the battle, runs on the baseball field while the men were serving in World War II. She was a mother showing the body of her dead boy to a home that never loved him. She was a nanny caring for the good white folks and their children. She was a human computer creating calculations for Friendship 7. She was a Black Panther fighting for rights of her people. She was a singer who was the first to have seven consecutive number one hits and the first woman to enter the Billboard 200 at number one. She was the first lady who advocated for education, health, and poverty awareness. She is an organizer who created the political and social movement Black Lives Matter. She was a daughter, a sister, a mother, a wife who contributed to this country. She should be honored, remembered, respected, loved, and cherished by all. So please say her name, Breonna Taylor, Luana Phillips, Latoya Denise James, Renisha McBride, Darnisha Harris, Ayanna Stanley Jones, and many more. They have too lost their lives to police brutality. Their names and stories should be remembered, just like the many black men and boys who've lost their lives. All right, so that was the winning poet. Um, and she most definitely had a lot to say. She also gave us a little history lesson there too. How many of those did you catch? All right, now I have to go and share this on Facebook and Instagram so that these teens will leave me alone. They have been chatting with us on, we have a chat feature on our website. So they've been like, hold on in the chat feature and the poor adult department is like, Dawn, who won? <laughs> They've been emailing me. They have been Instagramming me. They have been Facebooking me. They have been texting. It's like, okay, okay. I'm just gonna announce it now. I, this never happens. People are just like, yeah, okay, cool. I didn't win. That means if I didn't win. 
but no they they are like thirsty so let me go ahead and announce it on instagram and facebook Extra, extra, extra.